Hello everyone and welcome to my nerdy little corner of the internet. Today we are going deep into the math of Lorcana. Specifically, we will look into a method of analyzing brand new cards. A method I want to call the Three Advantages Analysis. We will look into the three main resources of Lorcana, how you can gain an advantage in each resource, and we will analyze new cards from Into the Inklands to see what their value is in Limited using this method. This analyst tool is inspired by Frank Karsten's article called Lorcana Resource Theory, Card Advantage, Ink Advantage, and Lore Advantage. We are using a lot of the ideas in this article, so I felt the need to share the article linked in the description below. The three advantages analysis requires an understanding of the three key resources of Lorcana, cards, ink, and lore. Seeing how cards affect each of these resources can help us determine the value of a card. Cards are always going to have a cost no matter what you do with them. The trick, especially in limited, is to get more value than you pay for. Even gaining a small advantage makes a card much better. Let's first look at the easy one, Lore Advantage. You have Lore Advantage over your opponent when you have more pips on board than your opponent. Lilo, making a wish, increases your Lore Advantage by 2, while most actions and items do not grant you Lore Advantage. This resource battle is very easy to look at and analyze. You can determine who has the lore advantage by who is capable of winning the game quicker, if nothing else is done. This is also called a player's clock. If you can win the game in 5 turns, when there is no interaction other than questing, then your clock is 5. If your opponent can win the game in 4 turns, then they have the lore advantage and you need to interact in a way to grant yourself lore advantage. The best way to gain lore advantage is by playing characters with high lore value and removing your opponent's characters. Removal actions such as Dragonfire and Ring the Bell grant lore advantage by slowing down the opponent's clock. The next resource is cards. Card advantage is generally understood as having more interactable cards than your opponent. By interactable cards, I mean cards that are in your hand, your inkwell, and in play. Card advantage leads to you having more options and thus, assumedly, better options than your opponent. Draw card actions such as Friends on the Other Side or Maleficent Sorceress are straightforward versions of card advantage, but card advantage is generated whenever you expend less cards than your opponent in a situation. So playing a Be Prepared on a board where you have one character and your opponent has five characters in play grants you a card advantage of three. This is where we get the term two for one. Two for ones are when your opponent uses two of their cards to remove one of yours. You have forgotten me is a two for one as your opponent is losing two cards while you are only using one. Inking a card or playing a character location or item does not lose card advantage as you are still able to interact with that card. Some ways to gain card advantage is drawing cards, removing your opponent's characters by challenging, and even ramping. Finally is ink, and ink is a little bit more complicated. Having ink advantage is about getting a head on board for less ink than your opponent. We treat our ink value as every character, location, and item in play as a blank piece of paper with an ink value on it, and the amount of ink that you have had access to and have used. As an example, Let's say I start turn 1 by inking a card and playing a flounder. I have used all the ink I've had available to me this game, and the ink value I have on board is 1 with my flounder. Let's say next turn I ink another card and play another flounder, but that's all I do. I have lost that one ink that I did not use, and so my ink value has decreased by 1, but my ink value also increased by 1 because I played a character with one ink's worth of value. Now let's go to turn three where I ink yet another card and play Maleficent Sorceress. I used up all my ink so I didn't lose any ink value this turn. I also played a three cost character. However, I don't gain three ink of value. This is because Maleficent as a blank character is just as valuable as a flounder. So we value her as one ink. We determine the board value of a character by their French vanilla stats. So for Maleficent Sorceress, she is a 2-2-1 with no French vanilla abilities. Therefore, she is valued at 1 ink. 
Now let's look at Genie on the job. He costs 6 ink, but he has an interplay ability. If we were to remove that ability, he is a 3-4-2 with evasive, which we value at 5 ink. So when Genie enters play, we have a value of his body at 5 ink, and if we bounce something with 2 or more ink value, then we have gotten more value than we paid for. In the description of this video is a chart showing how I personally value each card with their body, their lore, and their French vanilla abilities, such as Challenger, Bodyguard, and Ward. This chart is specifically for Limited, as in Constructed, the value of abilities such as Ward change dramatically. Ink is a very complex subject, but to boil it down to its most simple state, you are trying to do more things with less ink than your opponent. This can be done by shifting characters, ramping, using ink efficient removal, and trading a cheaper character for a more expensive character in a challenge. Cards that don't directly affect your board, such as card draw or deck manipulation, decrease your ink advantage for an increase in another value. Also, remember when you aren't using ink, you are losing ink value. This is why having ink sinks, such as Magic Mirror, can be very valuable and limited, and you are turning a resource that would have been wasted into a resource that you can use. Now that we have an idea of each resource in Lorcana, Frank Karsten determined an interchange value between them. One card is equal to two ink, which is equal to two lore. This also makes sense when we look at, again, Maleficent Sorceress. We are spending three ink, but we are gaining one card, one ink valued body, and one lore making it a good card as you are getting more value from the card than what you paid for. We can look at each of these aspects when analyzing new cards, especially for limited. With that in mind, let's look at some of the cards that are coming out in the new Into the Inkland set. First, let's look at How Far I'll Go, a 4-cost, uninkable action song that says, look at the top two cards of your deck, put one into your hand, and the other into your inkwell face down and exerted. First, we need to do some baseline analysis. This is an action, so as a baseline, we will be losing one card when we play this. We will also lose four ink if we play it without singing, or we lose the lore equal to the lore of the character that we are singing with. Let's start with the singing aspect. Let's say we sing it with Patches, a four cost, one lore character. So the cost of playing this card is one lore and one card. How far I'll go puts a card from your deck into your hand, so we are gaining one card. It also puts a card we did not have access to into the inkwell, which is also not just a card gained, but an ink gained as well. How far I'll go gives us an advantage of two cards and one ink. Therefore, we are spending one lore and one card for two cards and one ink, getting us a result of gaining one card, one ink, at the cost of one lore. This is a fantastic deal, despite putting patches at risk for a challenge. We also have another character, Bianca, who has Singer 4, who would be able to sing this song on turn 3, which would give us even more value in Limited. How Far I'll Go is an incredible card to sing. If we were to pay the ink cost, we would be spending 1 card and 4 ink for 2 cards and 1 ink, which is a net loss in the immediate, but if we were able to play a six cost character next turn, we are willing to take an ink loss on this turn to probably gain a large advantage on the next turn. Let's look at another card from Into the Inkland. Pongo, Determined Father. Pongo is a three cost inkable three two with one lore. He has Twilight Bark. Once per turn, you may pay two ink to reveal the top card of your deck. If it is a character card, put it in your hand. Otherwise, put it on the bottom of your deck. A one lore character with a total of five body points, three strength and two willpower, is valued at two ink. So on the initial play, we are neutral on card advantage, down one ink, but up one lore. This isn't ideal, but we can then look at the value of the ability. For two ink, we get the chance to draw a card. This also isn't necessarily ideal, as we are spending 2 ink for the chance at drawing a card. However, this is an optional ability, 
and it doesn't exert Pongo. So in situations where we have excess ink on a turn, we can activate this ability, utilizing two ink we would have lost otherwise, netting us an extra two ink and value whenever we are in that situation. And more often than not, we will draw a card off this, as your deck will be mostly characters. I personally value this option greater than one ink, and therefore I think this card is a net positive and a good card at least in limited. So that is the three advantages analysis. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe. Next week, I will be dropping starter deck guides as well as a draft guide for Into the Inklands, finishing up with a release day live stream where we will be hanging out and celebrating the release of the set together. Have a good day. Goodbye.